we're back at WesterCon 71 with presentations for future Worldcon bids. Next up is the bid for New Zealand in 2020, which will be selected this year. We, uh, we have the representatives here. You introduce yourselves and talk about yourselves a bit. Hi, I'm Benny Allo. I'm representing the New Zealand bid and will be a facilities division head should we win. As such, I can probably most closely talk about facilities. I can make general, I can make general commentary, but the facilities have been my area of particular specialization. Hi, I'm Debbie Chowdhury, and um, I'm representing the Zoom bid here. You should speak up. Yeah. Um, and uh, I got all kinds of jobs that Mari and Norm has been having me do. So I don't know exactly what I'll be doing, but I'm excited. It's, it's my first time going there. Um, we have a table upstairs. Uh, if there's any information you want, and we'll have all that there for you. Right, we have lots of information. Some of it is even accurate. <laughs> Now, it should be noted that New Zealand is the only bid that is filed. It is the only bid that is on the ballot. You have to be a member of this year's Worldcon in San Jose to vote. <coughs> there, you have to pay a voting fee. It's $40 to vote. That guarantees you a supporting membership in whoever wins. Uh, there is no guarantees in bidding, however. So. Right. The <coughs> big thing that some of you might or might not have heard about uh, we've attempted to put out press releases as much as we can, but not everybody is on various press releases lists. We have had to move the convention dates approximately two weeks earlier. The convention dates are now going to be Wednesday, July 29 through Sunday. It's a Wednesday through Sunday. Sunday, yeah. August 2nd. August 2nd, yeah. It's, it, it, Basically, it's that last weekend in July, floating into the beginning of August. Um, the reason for that is that our main exhibit hall, and the building that contains our main exhibit hall, among other things, basically, somebody with, somebody with a lot of money in fact, sufficient money that they don't even deal with the Convention Bureau, they deal directly with the city, came in and booked that facility for eight weeks. Starting with the days that we had originally planned for the convention. Wow. And you know, if somebody's prepared to go in with eight weeks, we're not going to be able to fight somebody with the money to rent, rent the convention center for eight weeks. So we basically said we can move to earlier or we can move to later. Later is really not feasible because basically that would put us in October yeah. or later. Does not work. It's less, but it's warmer. <laughs> no, yes. It's warmer. That's what it is. Uh, basically, <laughs> by moving approximately two weeks earlier, we probably knocked uh, maybe two or three degrees centigrade, call it five degrees Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. off the average temperature. And a hundred dollars off the year. The, uh, the, the, I'm speaking here not just as the moderator's panel, but also as the WSPIS division manager for this year's Worldcon. The New Zealand bid has refiled their bidding papers. The revised papers are available from the site selection section of the worldcon76.org website, as is a revised site selection ballot. We will accept, Worldcon 76 will, any bid for any votes that have already been cast for New Zealand, or it might be cast in the future for New Zealand, regardless of which date is actually on the ballot, will count toward the New Zealand bid. We're not going to be nitpicking over dates in that way. It's very clear what the voters' intent were. In, if somebody who's already voted wants to change their vote in some way, contact site selection. We'll deal with it. And that's it. You want to go on? Okay, let me talk a little bit about our facilities. As is fairly common in non-North American world cons, we do not have a multi-thousand room hotel with a 
convention center connected and all those other good things that people have come to expect. There are going to be a lot of hotels. Generally, they are fairly close. Uh, we are in two facilities primarily, plus one. The two facilities that we are primarily in are the TSB Convention Center with the connected Shed 6, and literally, you will, unless you know where it is, you can't tell the difference between what's in Shed 6 and what's in the TSB building. And the Intercontinental Hotel, which is about a block and a half away. However, we are using the Fowler Center, which is about a uh, third of a mile. So I, think, I think I saw 600 meters. Something like that. 600 well, yeah. meters. Yeah. yeah, it's about, uh, depending on exactly which yeah. path you take, because there's a whole bunch of ways of getting there. Um, that is currently scheduled to be the site of the Hugo's and Masquerade and nothing else. So you'll go there at night and then everything else is back in, including the parties, by the way, which are currently scheduled for being in TSB. Okay. They're, in, they're in, in convention they're center in, parties. They're so. in the convention center. I'll come to the questions in a minute. I want to give them a chance to give their talk. Uh, we are also using some of the function space in the intercontinental, not just bedrooms. Uh, particularly, the intercontinental is also the most expensive hotel, no surprise. Um, it's the closest. There are a bunch of cheaper hotels nearby, uh, including several run by, for example, a core which is a French hotel management company that just recently, in fact, bought the Fairmont chain. Oh. But has brands uh, such as Novotel or Ibis, which some of you who were in London yeah. might have stayed in an Ibis or Novotel. Yeah, uh, they run the gauntlet all the way from um, Le Meridien to Motel 6. <laughs> uh, and Red Roof Ends. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that it's one of those everybody's. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, before I take a question, I want to ask, I want to bring up one to you that has been, I've seen elsewhere. That there has been some concern expressed on the difficulty of getting between the facilities, particularly with someone with mobility impairments. Can you address the walking path, basically, between the Intercontinental, the TSB, and the Fowler Center? Yeah. Okay. Um, Wellington is hilly. There is no way around. That's <laughs> Wellington. That's what I've been waiting for. Yes. <laughs> Wellington is hilly. However, it's also directly on the harbor, and the Intercontinental and Fowler and TSB are all on the same level. It is a flat, roughly two to three minute walk uh, between the Intercontinental and TSB. I guess I have to put it in this way because this is the way I've seen the question written. Are there sidewalks? Is there a way to cross this large road that appears on the map, or are you talking about a freeway in the middle? I know the answer, but I'm giving the, you the question. Right, the answer is yes, there are sidewalks, and no, you don't have to cross a freeway. <laughs> there is, I believe, a way traffic traffic light to cross the street. There is a traffic, there is a traffic light to cross the street. Yes, that's what I was trying if to do. If you are going between TSB and Fowler, mm -hmm. there are several pathways some of which are along standard city sidewalks, some of which are along a walkway that runs right next to the harbor, gives you a somewhat better view. There is a fully accessible path. That's what I was, how, it's, 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 it, it's Moby friendly in that it, respect? It, it, is, it is Moby friendly to get between those three facilities. 
Okay, now we'll go ahead and go to the audience here. Uh, I, you actually asked first, so I'll go with you. Yes. Okay. You, had, you would ask earlier when I put you off. So. <laughs> uh, no, uh, uh, what I was going to ask, in, in, with the, the, that third of a mile, is about the same distance as the two hotels in Reno. No, uh, it's or, closer. It is closer? It's definitely closer. Okay. Um, so my, my question is, are there any <coughs> plans for occasional uh, shuttles between for those people who do have some, who, who would have some issues? We are, we are looking into it. A lot of it is going to depend on budget. In that, uh, will the intercontinental, <coughs> excuse me, will the intercontinental be the accessibility hotel and will the convention be handling those accessibility rooms? The question about accessibility rooms and will the intercontinental be the accessibility hotel? Um, yes and no. We will get all of the accessibility rooms in the intercontinental. It is nowhere near enough rooms for dealing with all the people with accessibility needs, nor for that matter are we convinced that as I remember I said earlier, it's the most expensive hotel. There are going to be people who are going to want ex accessibility rooms in places that are substantially cheaper than the Intercontinental. Basically, we're going to grab every accessibility room in all of the nearby hotels. And we are currently looking at doing what Dublin is planning on doing, that is, make a list of people who have notified the accessibility people, and those people will get first shot at booking rooms. Okay. Yes. Will you also let us know which hotels do not have elevators? We will. Because uh, some people don't want to schlep their luggage up four floors, you know, and... Yes. Uh, most of the hotels have elevators. In fact, most of the hotels actually have two sets. Many of the hotels have two sets of elevators. Okay. Remember what I said? Wellington is on a hill. Lots of hills. So that, for example, the James Cook, which is probably one of the closer conventions and is the next price range down from, it's a lovely hotel I stayed there when I went to New Zealand for a weekend a couple of months ago. Um, basically, the main entrance to the hotel is up about eight floors from sea level. Okay. What there is, is there is a hidden elevator in a place that you will never find, therefore we know that we will need to tell you where it is. <laughs> because there is a tiny sign that says, please ignore this sign, it might get you to some place you want to get to. Um, you take that elevator, it goes up through eight stories of parking garage, and dumps you into the lobby. And then you switch to the other set of elevators that actually goes to the suite floor. And the Nova Hotel, which is like three doors down, has its own hidden elevator a few doors okay. down. That's important. Everything is built to deal with the fact that you've got these hills. Okay. Now, we do have some budget hotels that have low, that are low enough that they have like an elevator and don't count on it very much. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, all of the hotels do have free Wi-Fi, uh, so that's included. The New Zealand dollar compared to the U.S. dollar is much, much cheaper. Yeah. All the prices that we quote are going to be in New Zealand dollars, including your pre-supports. Okay. Uh, New Zealand dollar right now is trading at about 70 cents. So. When, when you see the prices in New Zealand dollars, remember to think of them if you're U.S. based, which most of you here are, think of them as 70 cent dollars. Uh, the prices include all of free Wi-Fi, the prices include all taxes. <coughs> Let me put in a little asterisk. 
Um, the New Zealand Supreme <coughs> Court has declared that the arrangements that credit card companies have in essentially every country in the world, that basically you can't put on a credit card surcharge, they've declared that illegal. Most, most places in New Zealand will put a surcharge on their posted prices if you attempt to pay with a credit card. Uh, typically, by the way, that ranges about one and a half, maybe three and a half percent, depending on which card. Okay, I think we have time for one more question to remove. Was, it, was there one more? One more? Sharon? Um, so you mentioned that the parties will be in the function space. Can you explain a little bit more about the plan? Is it going to be like LongCon was? Is it going to be separate boxes? Um, the current plan is separate separate rooms, uh, basically take the rooms in TS, in Shed 6 actually probably, and convert them over, or take some of the room. TSB in its half of the building, again has a few small rooms, and we are working with them on trying to get the corkage arrangements to be as reasonable as possible. All right then, once again, the election is this year in San Jose. Voting is already open. You can go to the worldcon76.org website under site selection. About this. You, if you are not going to San Jose, but you are a member of the convention, you can vote by email or postal mail. You do have to uh, purchase what's called a voting token if you're gonna buy by, pay by credit card. Uh, and that's all explained on our website at worldcon76.org. Right, and you, we are not taking pre-supportings in cash here. Uh, you can get pre-supportings on our website. The website lists all the prices in New Zealand dollars, but uh, we're using our payment process. It will take pretty much any money's credit card. And With no surcharge. And you have a table um, at the, the fan table area. Yes. Are you holding a party here? No. Okay. Thank you all very much for that one.